Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our August 12th uh, meeting of the commission. Uh, we've structured uh, today's meeting as a uh, business meeting. There won't be any presentations. I see Commissioner Kosh just join us. Very nice to see you. And um, we have a number of items to uh, to go through. I am uh, obviously we have carved this out uh, two hours, um, but I think we may be able to finish sooner than that. But we'll um, why don't we get started and go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead, and uh, uh, Mr. Chambers would like to address the um, the commission members uh, on a matter involving the interim report, and so that. Um, We'll take that first before we get to the, the other commission business. So, uh, Commissioner Chambers, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, it was brought to my attention. Um, I first, I'm, I'm, as I have said to a couple of people, I actually said this to Troy Williams, the chief of diversity and inclusion, that I personally take the hit for um, an error that is listed in the interim report. When I looked, when I looked at the date, the date was May fifteenth, and it was two days prior to a large um, event that I was doing for another client. So I did not fully read the interim report, and was not sensitive to the fact that in the MWBE portion of that report, one of the the notes that I made um, when our subcommittee met with both um, Carla Tucker and um, and Troy was the fact that we we were really concerned about the that it was only two people pretty much in that department. And God forbid if anything happened to Carla or the gentleman's name is Warren, um, I think that's his name, then they were that that department is up the creek with no paddle and probably no raft, right? And so knowing also that she explained to us what was going on with Mr. Warren in reference to jury duty and the fact that he's close to retirement. I made those notations in my notes and those notes were forwarded to Jasmine and Elizabeth and I did not review it to have those, those names deleted from the interim report. With that being said, it went public and, um, and that's not fair to um, Mr. Warren, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his last name because as it went and so I have two concerns. One, I'm asking, can we revise the interim report to delete those names and definitely make sure it's not in the final. Two, because it went public, it was not also shared with the department heads. So it went to, from what I was told, an employee found it online, shared it with some other people. Then it kind of went up the food chain and the department heads found out. So instead of it going top down, it went bottom up and it caught the department heads off. I don't, as a commissioner, I don't know if we have the right, but I think someone in, on the county side should have been aware also to let the department heads know, give them a heads up before it went public as well. I'm taking the hit. Um, I talked to Troy and I told him I apologize because as he said, he um, though it, they were gonna, it would be okay, but it could have been a, a HR problem for Mr. You know, the fact that, you know, who's the, who's, who said I was retiring, you know? Um, and so I, that was wrong. I was writing my notes because we knew how urgent it was to try to beef up that staff, but those notes went into the final report and I'm taking a hit because I didn't read it and I apologize and I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention can we be a little bit more, you know, don't make the mistake I made. And, um, and Phil, that's what I wanted to talk to you about the other day, because I wanted to make sure that the, the employee would not feel bad, you know, for his name being broadcast and now everybody knows. So that's that's what I wanted to bring to the floor. Thank you. Good. Understood. Um, well, I think we can, um, not sure what the logistics are, but we'll figure out the logistics to, um, uh, to amend the interim report, and then we will certainly make certain that um, that was articulate. We'll certainly make certain we will be sure to uh, avoid uh, naming any names um, in similar circumstances when we do the final report. 
I, I know Elizabeth is away this week. Let me make a note to or, uh, Jasmine, if you make a note as well, and we'll figure out how to um, how to correct that. Um, yeah, the best uh, way, honestly, Carla, if you could just edit that paragraph or that section and remove their names and reframe it however you would like and send me that language, I can work with Lauren, we can get the file updated and we can get the web page updated. Um, I do want to say that we did share the interim report with senior staff, so I know that did go out from Elizabeth. Um, I'm not sure of how she directly emailed the directors, but it was shared with senior staff as soon as it was published. Um, mm -hmm. Now, whether you know everyone, I don't know, knew what it was or was able to take the time at the immediate moment to review it, but um, I do um, agree. Maybe we find another way to get another set of eyes on things before the final report. Um, this process was the, uh, like we said, we work more time in now for the final report to make sure we have just more input and more time to get everything done. We yeah. get a little rushed for the interim right. report. So, um, but you know, we're learning this as we drive it, but. And, and can... that's why and Mr. Troy Williams, he understood the heart of the, our intent. It's just that our impact was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. um. So he understood it and 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 the results were we they did get to, well they at least I don't know if they have the staff, but they got the money for those two staff that we were concerned about. So my heart was in the right place, but my my feet didn't <laughs> my feet didn't walk it right. So um and and thank you for having extra eyes, but you're right, we were all trying to get it done and um you know, and I've and I've talked to the various parties to let them know. I really am sorry because you know th that puts them in an awkward position, and you know don't want to do that. So yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, I'll just keep an eye out for when you get that edited to me, and then okay. I'll coordinate with Elizabeth. And, I'll let you know. and I will, um, for the sake of, I think I will CC um, Philip. You know, as and you and Elizabeth. How about that? Yeah, works for me. Okay, that, that's all right. Great. Thank you, the Chair. Yes, please, Madam CEO. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, good to see you all as well. I wanted to say that, um, uh, Paula, yes, the, the, the staff were April 1st uh, because we have, I mean, um, July 1st, because we have placed in the budget during our, our budget process back in February and March, we have placed for, for this cycle two positions and uh, the enhancement of the the PRISM um, software include the, the, the um, monitoring modules, the modules that the county had not purchased right. prior uh, administrations. So yes, and it is our intent to continue to advocate uh, as we build out the program for more staff, because as you know, we have to implement and stand up the DBE program. So yes, uh, Carla and team are um, interviewing for for staff. What the, the the positions should have been posted by now, and are interviewing for staff. So we anticipate having our staff, two additional staff, by mid um, uh, mid fall, so that we can move forward on the rest of the implementation uh, action steps from the um, the disparity uh, study. Yeah, awesome. In the work, they were in the works. Money's yeah. Gone. Advertisements gone out. So yeah. Great. Well, thank awesome. you. <laughs> thank thank you for that information. That's uh, that's also good to know. Um, okay, so let's now move to the commission business uh, aspect of the agenda. Um, and uh, let's start with item A, which is takeaways from the best practices panel and the use of those takeaways in preparing the final report. Um, the, um, uh, again, I want to commend PETA and her, uh, and her subcommittee for uh, bringing that panel together. It was an excellent group of very knowledgeable people from a number of different perspectives. Um, and I, I think that as we, as this group has talked about before, best practice is really uh, it's sort of an overlay to all of the subcommittees we, we have in place now. And um, and since that panel discussion, uh, PETA and her uh, subcommittee have been very busy uh, 
Peter actually sent out something um, earlier um, uh, earlier this week on um, uh, their issues about um, on call and some other things. But on the best practices piece, I'm curious. Um, uh, yeah, Peter, is there anything you'd like to uh, address generally about about the panel and um, how their um, or how its uh, general suggestions can can be used or and should be followed up on in any particular way by um, by uh, other subcommittees? Thanks, Phil. Um, I took the opportunity to uh, review the video again, uh, along with the slides that the speakers had sent ahead, uh, which was very helpful uh, because as everyone had observed, it was a lot of uh, information that they presented to us in a um, whirlwind fashion. Um, I, I'm so I've added to my my notes on that, <clears throat> and a couple of things sort of came to the fore in my mind. One of them has to do with how procurement is structured in the county. Um, in different ways, um, the speakers were saying centralized uh, procurement with procurement tools in the agencies. So it was centralized, but um, dispersed as well, but with a strong um, foundation of procurement that could be the, the resource and the tool kit for anybody else who's doing contracting. So I think that's worth uh, worth considering. The other thing I did, and I'm, I'm more interested in other people's um, feedback, but the, uh, but the other thing I started to do was in going through and reviewing uh, my notes and the video is to write down a couple of things that I want to follow up with our speakers on. A couple of people said, well, I could send you this. Well, we haven't seen a, a couple of those things, so I want to just remind them. Um, and then I had some specific questions for uh, a couple of the speakers, but I'd really uh, rather hear what other people had to say. Sure, thank you. Um, so I will, uh, yes, Mr. Dixon. I, I, I wanted to um, go over, I did go back over as well and review the um, video and the presentation because it was a lot of information. And some of the notes that I jotted down, um, I think are really important, particularly after Peter sent us that audit report, it really toned in what I wrote down. Uh, so I'm just gonna just kind of go through and I can email. Um, one of the items that I think was significant was sustainable procurement consistent with the policies of Baltimore County. Um, more defined private public partnerships on big projects. Um, looking at data for planning in your procurement staff to determine waste as well as where the money's going. Uh, one of the big things that was consistent with the train with the various uh, speakers was how will we uh, bring in new talent or develop the talent skills of your current procurement people. And that was just kind of evident in that audit that was done where certain codes and procedures weren't followed on on call and contracts, et cetera, because I went through that. Um, and what are procurement folks? How you know? How do you motivate procurement folks, and and what you need to find out to build skills and execute those procurement um, individuals? Because a lot of times in that arena, um, you know, if you're constantly just dealing with contracts on a regular basis, and and you're looking at, you know, how does that fit? I mean, to me, I probably after a while would get extremely bored, and so. Where are those individuals' mindsets there? And has there been in the past a training or are we attracting um, the kind of talent to move the process forward? So I think um, within our recommendations, we definitely need to um, incorporate some ideas and thoughts about um, 
um, the data and planning the procurement and as well as developing um, um, enhancing current talent, attracting new talent, as well as um, um, enhancing some real training. Those are some those are some of the um, uh, some of the items that I pulled out from that. Great, great, very helpful. Um, others, how about from the instructions of committee? Yes, uh, Commissioner Plackett. And I, I agree with Sheila that, uh, you know, a lot of the things that uh, I took away from going to that video again uh, and the notes, um, training seems to be a real was a, was a big factor, uh, getting the right training, sending the people to uh, training and having a budget for training. I'm not sure whether if there is a budget in the, in the procurement department now for training, but we really they really need to set up a budget and make sure that uh, um, people get trained and they come back and share that uh, information with the rest of the department. I, that's that's always important, and we do the same kind of thing in, in our company as well. Sure, sure. Um, others. Uh, uh, Commissioner Phillips, uh, Dan is um, uh, Dan's away this week, but anything anything from your uh, from your subcommittees that um, in particular uh, jumped out at you from uh, from those presentations? No, but Dan and I have not talked about that, so yeah. I don't have that. Okay, great. And uh, Commissioner Chambers, anything anything to add? Anyone else? Oh, yes, I, uh, Commissioner Walsh, I didn't see your hand up, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all right. Um, a couple of things just jumped out at me, and it, uh, uh, the first one was mentioned before, the workforce development piece. All, all those panelists mentioned that, how important that is. I know we've talked about it before, so um, I think that's pretty much covered by the, the previous work we did. Another thing that, that jumped out at me was that threshold for small procurements. Um, you know, I know Anne Arundel County's was pretty high. I know, I know, uh, I think Rose had said that we raised ours during the COVID, but I think that is an important discussion because, you know, while you would lose some control, it certainly would maybe help in workload. So there's probably a sweet spot in there that maybe you're at that now, but I think that should be talked about in the future also. Um, market intelligence tools, I think one of the, the folks I think the lady from Fairfax um, mentioned that, how important she felt that was with having understanding of where the market is with certain procurements. And I'm not sure we do that now. I don't know whether, Rose, you could jump in, but I, that, that, I took that, a, that as being a really important thing that um, we probably don't do as much of as we could do. We, no, we don't have a, an additional like third party resource tool to do that. Um, and I want to say it may have been Andrew Hine from Andorano County, um, because I know that they do have that tool in place. Um, but to answer your question, no, we don't. But um, I know Andrew Hine does use that at his agency. It's kind of like a. I, and he showed it to me and I've had some demos with um, some vendors that provide it the, the simplest way I can. Um, I can describe that system is kind of like a um, like an Angie's list. It's a a list of you know uh, vendors that provide a source of different information that you can pull from and look at different you know market trends. Um, you know, see what's going on, see what's up, see what's down, um, see what you know uh, different agencies are purchasing the most and the least. So. Thank you, and that, that was it, Mr. Chairman. But I think I think that might be worthy of a paragraph or two in the final report so that, to consider that. That that's a great point, and um, I, I'd hate to add to Ms. Butler's list of, of things to do. But it would be if you have an opportunity to check back, and if there are some specific any specifics on the the programs that are available out there. Um, be helpful to uh, helpful to know that because that's a that's a great point. It's a great point. Yes, Mr. Richkus. Um, uh, the issue of uh, market intelligence tools uh, is also on my list of 
things to follow up with our speakers. So, uh, Rose, why don't you hold off on that? And um, I'll add that to my list for Andrew, but um, Kathy Muse also said that they had a toolkit for a market intelligence. So I want to see, uh, and it'll be interesting to compare uh, what they both say uh, in regard to that. Um, I'd like to echo uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Sheila mentioned, and that is um, the importance of data. I'm very anxious to see what PRISM is going to be able to do in the purchasing arena, um, because as all of the speakers emphasized, uh, the, the information needs to be at your fingertips, and it has not been at the fingertips in the county. Um, as anybody who uh, we all experienced to one degree or another, when you ask for information, it's a laborious process for staff to get back to us um, because of the weaknesses in the existing system. Um, and can I say, I'm sorry, can I just kind of comment on that for you, Peter? Um, I'm familiar with PRISM. I've, I've had some prior training on it several years ago, and I've also been um, a recipient and using it on a particular project. And it is real time, as real as the people who input the information, i.e. both the prime and the subcontractors. So um, as long as everybody is doing their part, it will be real time. And if, as long as you have the, a user um, identification number, you can, based on your credentials to go in and see, you know, whatever it is you can see, You'll be able to um, to see where where everything is in real time. And the great thing about Prism is, if a subcontractor says, "I didn't get paid. I submitted all my information," you know, and the um, someone in procurement goes in and checks and sees that they did submit, and then you talk to the prime, and the prime says, "I submitted, but they didn't." Then that that the procurement department can say, or whoever it is um, that's responsible can say. Well, you, well, you didn't get it in, you know, you're late. And so it's, it is um, a dashboard and everything. It's really, really robust, but it all depends on who, if the people are putting the information in, as long as they're putting it in on time, you can see it on time. So that's, that's the, um, the beauty of that program. I, can I add to that? This is Carla, the other Carla. Um, <laughs> uh, another factor to that is on our end, I also need staff. Uh, the staff that's being brought on will be assisting to follow up with those vendors who are not doing their part to make sure that they are putting the information in. So that's that's where the downfall is right now because the procurements that are coming out of purchasing, I am the sole person that's responsible for tracking all of those um, MBE plans through PRISM, but I'm doing everything else MBE as well. So um, once we bring the staffing on, that should assist in that area to make sure that all vendors are doing their part. Great, that's very helpful to know. Um, I don't know if anybody else want to say anything. I mean, if not, yeah, let, yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Let me just add a couple of things. Um, in the presentations that we had, uh, there were a couple of suggestions for uh, improving uh, succession planning uh, as well as attracting. Uh, uh, talent, and it had to do with the actual organizational chart, if you will, or the structure of the procurement operation, as well as how the uh, job descriptions are um, worded and, and constructed. Um, and this uh, could be part of another of the suggestions that we've discussed which is um, a salary uh, review uh, for that operation. Those kinds of, the, you know, they sort of all uh, wind together. Um, the issue of uh, sustainable sustainability um, is on my list for Victoria because her, one of her slides indicated that they had a green procurement module of some description. So I'm going to be asking her to share that with us, which she was certainly willing to do. So that we can see if that um, offers some things and then just in their uh, in their comments, uh, doing things like uh, stop that now, which was something that Kathy Muse mentioned. 
uh, they did a internal uh, uh, memo. If you could stop one thing to improve, you know, the workflow or whatever, what is it? And she said they got some good ideas from that. So my suggestion, Phil, would be that um, since we've now had a chance to talk about it, we've had a chance to look over our notes from the presentation by the panelists um, itself, that we all um, contribute to what I think of as a rolling list and send send them to Jasmine to uh, collect and compile. And then we can go through that list and start to pull out things that are either different ways of saying the same thing or uh, related to a larger topic and sort of winnow that rolling list down into sections that will more naturally fit into final recommendations. Great. Well, I think for purposes of the minutes, um, everyone's comments will be collected, but let's, let's see if we can, uh, as opposed to waiting, waiting for the minutes, see if we can get those sooner rather than later so we can get that rolling list started. Yes. Ms. Beller. Yeah. Yes. So, um, just. Wanted to add to it. I did send over to, um, you know, PETA, you know, my input mm -hmm. from the best practice in um, slide. So, uh, most of mine is probably aligned with what everyone has shared. So, I don't want to repeat that. But what I do want to add um, that was one of the other takeaway points is that I noticed that uh, it was definitely important for that communication with the stakeholders was super important. And I would like to add that, you know, to that list as well, um, because sometimes, you know, we have to uh, make sure that we're just all on the same, you know, um, plan level field that we all have understanding that we're all moving forward together and that if something is happening over here that we just make sure that it's if it's going to impact another unit that, you know, we are all talking at the same time. So. Just wanted to add that in there. Thank you. Sure. And if I can add on to that one thing please, that we brought up, hello, that I thought was important is the importance of everyone kind of speaking the same language that was mentioned. Um, that uh, when you know sometimes the new people come in or someone comes in and we transition, everyone isn't always speaking the same language, and that there has to be a direct effort to make sure you know even within. A certain agency that you're speaking the same language and even amongst different departments or agencies, you all are speaking the same language. Because I noticed, you know, working in different jurisdictions, each jurisdiction kind of has their own language, their own process, and it's kind of like a completely different world. So I can understand how easily, you know, the language can change or get mixed up, you know, as as staff and things transition. So. No, that's, a, that's a great point. Communication and uh, always, um, always, always key. Um, so, apropos, before we move on to the next, the next topic, is there any? Uh, so, so we'll, the running list is a great idea. You have a couple of sources for that. Is there? Um, I think we ought to try to identify by our next commission meeting, which is August twenty sixth. If there's anybody else we want to hear from on the best practices side. Um, and so ask all the subcommittee chairs to give that some particular thought because before you know it, it's going to be, it'll be September 1 and our final report is due at the end of November and sort of as a backwards segue to an earlier discussion in this meeting about um, uh, the uh, sort of rush to finish the interim report on time. We'll, Want to leave ourselves in enough room. I'm glad we put all the time in we did on the interim report. There are obviously other things we are going to finish up with now, but um, the lesson learned there was um, some more time for uh, review and input by everybody. And uh, we just need to be mindful of, again that Thanksgiving weekend is right there before the interim report is due. We want to be sure we, uh, we leave ourselves enough time. So um, that. Um, uh, so, if there's anything else on the best practices piece, and yes, Peter. Um, Jasmine, is it possible to sh uh, allow me to share screen? 
or do I need a if I need a whole lesson on it, then I'll yeah, no, 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 no. Um, let's see. You should be able to share your screen now. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. I've been uh, playing around with uh, how to sort of visually describe some of the things that we're talking about. Um, I like graphics and in, in reports for one thing, and it's also it can be a, a more effective way than trying to get somebody to wade through verbiage. So this little drawing, uh, which I don't know how to do, but uh, you'll get the idea. Um, sort of synthesizes a couple of the things that we've been talking about. One, um, the benefits of a more centralized procurement. Um, and two, the idea of speaking the same language and having consistency across the enterprise in terms of policies and procedures um, and training. And whether or not, um, as the audit reported, uh, people are, they may have policies, but they're agency policies. They're not necessarily tied into the procurement portion of it. And there may, uh, and um, those people uh, weren't required to take any ethics training, which we know is available. And so that's another gap. So, of course, the county's in the business of uh, providing services to its residents. And the operating agencies are the ones that do that. But the foundation of how that all comes together starts with county code, policies and procedures, and the fiduciary and ethical tenets that we expect our public service uh, people uh, to adhere to. And then the procurement methods and tools build on that foundation. Well, then you have those contracting agencies uh, that are the ones that are actually using contractors, spending, uh, using using the money that's been budgeted, et cetera. So, right now we have purchasing services. You know, excuse my incorrect nomenclature, but we also know that facilities management uh, contracts. We know that. Department of Public Works and Transportation contracts. We know that OIT contracts. I believe I'm correct that Rec and Parks uh, contracts, and I'm sure there may well be other agencies. But this is just to give the concept of when everybody's not working off the same procurement methods and tools and language. When everybody's not getting the same training, they are disconnected from consistency and efficiency, and they're uh, disconnected and or ignorant of the code that um, is the basic foundation and the basic uh, county-wide policies and procedures. And they may be clueless about what their fiduciary and ethical responsibilities are. So then their columns are floating in air, and you know what that means for the operating agencies, county services, and service to the county residents, it's gonna collapse. So this, this obviously needs refinement uh, and somebody who knows what they're doing um, and you know more accuracy than I could apply to it. But I, uh, I just wanted to share that with you um, as something to think about as we move forward and as we think about best practices and how it all could come together to the benefit of the county. Well, that's, that's a great graphic, you know. Thank you. So now if I can, hang on a second. Uh, if Jasmine, if you, can, if you can stop my screen sharing, because I, I seem to be beyond my capabilities here. And thanks for the time to share that with you. No, thank you for taking the time to put it together. Um, and I'm with you on the the power of a of a great graphic. Thank you.
we can, um, you know, there we go. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, that, that's terrific. So, if we, Jasmine, if we can get the, the rolling list, um, if you have, uh, if you have uh, Ms. Butler's list, and let's pull them together, get everybody to take a look at them, see if we uh, see what kind of follow up we need in terms of, in terms of further speakers, or even if it's not a presentation to the whole, uh, to the whole commission, then to the appropriate subcommittee, so all these good ideas can be worked in. Um, so moving, if uh, we may, to the next item on the agenda, um, uh, which I have listed here as a report. There was a July 28 um, MBWB um, training uh, session, and um, I was not able to attend. I think a couple people on this call were, and, and if so, if someone could just give us a brief, uh, brief report on how that went. Um, I also, I think I remember seeing Emails, maybe I'm mixing up with something else. There, I think were some technical difficulties with getting on, on board, but I'm not sure that I'm right about that. Um, but if there's any kind of uh, takeaways that would be helpful for the commission to hear, uh, that'd be great. One of the things would be, uh, would be of interest in what types of, what types of uh, business, businesses participated in that training session. Anybody able to take a, take a minute and tell us about that? Okay. I had I had issues with getting on. I ended up finally doing it by phone. And to be honest with you, I think it was too long. And so I was like in and out of it because it was like from 11th or 3. Oh, okay. And because of listening to it on phone, it just it, it didn't have the same impact for me. So I, I, I would have to go back and look at even what notes I took. Um, but um, maybe um, Carl and Tucker can uh, share about what went on. But I just had some real challenges. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I also yeah. tried to get on uh, yeah. and could not. Um, I did listen by phone until uh, for the first hour, um, but then after continuing to try to get on after some. Fixes were um, shared and still not able to do so. Uh, um, I gave up, but I did uh, hear the county executive speak uh, as well as uh, uh, Carla, and the MBE presentation was very similar to what we had heard already. I don't, I don't think there was anything new, but that could be because I'm not that familiar with the details of that. I'll speak as another panel member. Absolutely. And, and um, I was back channeling with Carla Tucker and Stacy Rogers and Carla was busy trying to be the page turner with the presentation. So um, it, we brought it to Stacy's attention. Um, they did a yeoman's job in trying to do a workaround because it ended up being a WebEx issue, no matter what they sent us in reference to passwords. And we just could not get on. It was crazy. So what, um, they were able to do was to email us the pre the PowerPoint presentation and follow along. And they literally took about a half an hour break to try to work it out. That didn't work. So what ended up working, we got the PowerPoint presentation and I've sent it out to as many people as I could and followed along that way. And the benefit, at least for me, while I knew, like Peter said, the presentation with Dr. Tillman was the same pretty much that we received. What was important that I wanted to see was any changes made um, on the talking about PRISM that I wasn't aware of. And so we could see how PRISM was going to work. And then listening to the new or acting um, Embu chief for Baltimore City and um, the young lady for um, MDOT. Mm -hmm. So by, um, had, by being able to at least follow, hear them, we were all on phone. <laughs> but we were following along with the PowerPoint and I was able to get through and, and able to, to see what was, what worked, what didn't work. And, and then, uh, Stacy had, uh, Troy, um, used his cell phone to take any questions mm -hmm. for the chat. So trust me, 
the, the staff did a yeoman's job in spite of the craziness that we were all trying to work out with WebEx. And so and, and it seemed like it made it look like it was a county fault, and it wasn't. The Stacy just corralled everybody and it was like a team effort and it worked. So I was able to stay on and gain the benefit that I needed to see what the new it, the new um, pieces that Prism brought to the table because she's always updating. I was able to see this new gentleman that's with Embu with the city and um, hear how, you know, because I asked some questions to Troy and then Troy posed them to the gentleman to because some some of the questions I knew the answer to, I wanted to see how he was going to respond because he is new. So, you know, they're trying to make some changes there. And then also listening to the young lady, I think her name was Vashti from the state yes. in reference to the DBE portion. And, um, you know, you can tell how much they know, how much they don't know. But so it was beneficial um, in spite of the chaos. County did a great job in trying to move it along. So hopefully um, that won't happen again, you know, should they and, they, and should because Stacy kept saying, I wonder why everybody's on the phone. So that was why. So, but anyway. They, you know, all things being what they are, you know, um, I was able to to, to manage and, and get something out of it just to see where their partners were and in, in the whole piece. Mm -hmm. Great. Chair, yeah, yes. There's a couple of quick things. Um, yes. Carla, thank you so much because that was like, you know, making decisions quick on your feet so that your whole project won't crash and burn. But a couple updates on that. First of all, we had 287. Um, registrations. So we were very, very pleased. We did a pre survey with respect to uh, who the audience who would be in the room. And we're very pleased to see that 63% of the registrants were individuals who had not done business with Baltimore County because we asked that we also asked how many of the um, registrants were indeed businesses that were located in Baltimore County, but a goodly number of individuals who were Baltimore County based businesses, because we don't have a, a uh, you know, mandate around, you know, being a Baltimore County based like Montgomery County and other jurisdictions do. Um, the third thing that on the um, um, registration data we asked, are you registered or certified, are you certified with the state or the city? Um, many of the registrants were indeed certified with one or the other, and then a small population with both. So what we were, what we've been able to do, and I want, I was, I was just saying goodbye to our summer intern. Because of what happened, we only had telephone numbers. So we're like, okay, how do we uh, disaggregate this data to, to know who attended and who did it? Because what we are doing, we're going to do our pro survey, but we had to take the time to analyze who these individuals were based on our phone numbers. Our summer intern, a sophomore at Milford Mill High School, I got to give a big shout out for my community uh, high school, was able to disaggregate that data and bump those numbers against the registrations. So now we know who the people were. We had about a hundred or so people at the height of the, the uh, session who, who had logged on by phone. So we're taking those individuals and we're sending them a follow-up email, thanking them, apologizing about the, the technical snafu and confirming this was indeed a, a system issue with, with WebEx We've had here or there during the pandemic. Then we are indeed um, giving them, you know, asking them some post event activities. We also have the link now. Carla put it in the, the chat, but we're sending the link to them as well in case they wanted to go back and view anything that they may not have, have caught. So that's how we're handling that group. That's about 100 of the 287. The remainder of those individuals, we are sending an email that says, sorry, you were unable to join us, or if you were not able to access, uh, we did have a technological uh, challenge. However, here is the link to the video, uh, uh, you know, the recording of the event. Uh, please, at your leisure, review it. If you have questions, we have a dedicated email box. And for both populations, what we're doing 
if there's anyone who is not a certified uh, MBE, WBE uh, 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 contractor, we are forwarding the, the emails. If they email us back in the survey and say they are interested in becoming certified, we have shared with Vashti and the, and the new gentleman from Baltimore City that we will forward those names back. We will keep this base of individuals uh, to promote other activities that we're going to have as we enhance our outreach. We're going to have industry day. We're going to have uh, technical assistance sessions that we're going to do in conjunction with um, our um, Department of uh, workforce and economic development. That's all a part of our enhanced effort. So while we had the snafu, we still are able to move forward with where, what we're working on, and we're pretty excited. That, that all sounds very positive, and um, um, so excellent list of uh, remedies for going back and dealing with the technological snafu. Um, that's great. Uh, all good to know. Uh, and if I could ask you, Madam CAO, uh, any idea about do we have a wide range of industries, businesses? Um, are we able to tell that kind of uh, information? We ask them what um, to name their businesses. And if you look at the businesses, you see the diversity. We were just talking about that in a, one of our internal meetings uh, today, the range of services that uh, were represented. I mean, it was really a, a across the continuum, baker, bakeries, all kinds of, you know, entities that particularly those have not done business with us. And that's, that's what we're seeking. We, we want to retain those that we have, but we want to engage those that for whatever reason, uh, have not done business. Now, later, as we engage further, we're going to get into some questions around what is it that you need? You know, what kind of assistance do you need? And then we'll begin to uh, plan out our industry days and, and different ways for our staff to interface with um, the, the um, small business community in terms of commodities and dealing back with the NACE code as we identify our services and doing forecasts. All of these pieces, which is fortunate for me, I had the same responsibility as the Social Security Administration. So we're just taking a page, some of the pages out of that playbook and incorporating them here in the county. Okay, well, thank you. All right, thanks very much everybody for, for those reports um, and uh, great to hear about the follow-up as well. Um, Item C on our business uh, commission business portion of the agenda. Um, plans for re-engagement with Dr. Ramsey about the expanded study that um, uh, she and her team at uh, Mason uh, Tillman uh, undertook. Um, my understanding is there is uh, still some time available under her contract, and um, I don't know if if our uh, for our MBWB um, subcommittee, you know, has plans to talk to her further. Does anyone in the commission on the commission? Is there um, uh, is there a view that it would be helpful to have her back to speak to the full commission? I just want to make certain again before time starts to run by here that to the extent we would like to hear further from her, um, that we figure out the best way to do that. Thoughts? Well, I'll say she did ask us recently <laughs> okay. in our, in our um, meetings with her what the status was because we're yes. trying to round out our our engagement with her because it was joined with our event. Those hours were joined with our event. Sure, sure. Um, Scott, were you going to say something? I thought he was. I thought I heard his voice. Um, one of the things we held off or because Carla Tucker asked us to hold off until we had that event, um, the one we just talked about, to address all, any other outstanding issues. Um, knowing, and so we could also understand what, based on the Tillman report, what the county's response to their recommendations were going to be, because um, 
you know, some of the re responses were very. So I think before we say yay or nay to uh, Ms. T meeting again with Ms. Tillman, I think maybe the MBE committee might want to do a once over to compare what Carla's department has recommended versus what we recommended. And the, and then from there, oh, Scott says he's having difficulty, but not able to engage in audio. Okay, so I think if if we can just um, and I'm just going to ask the committee. It's not that we have to meet because Lord knows that's a that's an issue. But if you can just look at Carla's report versus our recommendation, even with the caveats that we've made, if we can see if we're in in alignment, great. If we're not, and we need to talk to Miss Tillman again, fine. But I think we're pretty much aligned. I don't think there's any, but I'm just asking the committee members, can we just take another look at it, all, all of us, and then um, report back to me, what's today? Thursday in a week, because on Friday I'm out. So if you can get back to me in a week, that would be great. Thank you. And, and in that same field of thought, um, again, the commission will be meeting on August 26th. It would be great to have, but sort of that one way or the other, whether we need something further uh, from uh, Dr. Ramsey and her team or not, again, for the planning uh, for our September and October October meetings. Anybody have anything else on, uh, on the Dr. Ramsey topic? Okay. Um, the, oh, can I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm please, just gonna ask one other thing. Um, sure. Uh, Steve mentioned well both both Peter and Steve mentioned about uh, um that insurance thing or whatever about it not being a good thing to do and Carla Tucker agreed with it was a recommend I can't remember what it was and I wanted to ask while we were all here was that addressed Carla in your um your report that you were you all were not going with that recommendation about um um, not having that insurance. I can't remember what it was a certain kind of insurance. It's the owner, like, mm -hmm. the yeah. owner, con owner controlled insurance. And actually we're, we're, we've I've received copies from, um, Maryland stadium authority on their program. And we are looking at MTA Maryland transit administration's program. Uh, we're just reviewing it internally. It's not a, it's not a no, but it's not a yes. Okay. Just look, Cause we didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it was. So I'm, I'm still doing research on it. So I didn't have, I couldn't comment one way or the other. And I think that was the biggest, um, biggest, what am I trying this, the, we didn't meet. Disconnect. <laughs> and yeah, the disconnect. yeah, but thank you. The disconnect. So I wanted to just kind of put that one up there. Um, if we can just remember to look at that one, and it might have been maybe one other, but it was very little, and um, for for that, okay. Can okay. I, can Thank I, you. Can I add to that? I'm sorry, um, Mr. Phil. Um, Go ahead. The the insurance, from what I've gathered thus far, it's a voluntary program that the jurisdictions put in place to help small businesses to be able to afford. Um, insurance is not mandatory. It was a voluntary program from what I've gathered so far um, from our internal uh, law law office. Actually, um, one of our attorneys is a former um, MPA uh, lawyer and she she made us aware of what <laughs> it did for MPA, but it um, made it affordable for small business to obtain insurance under for railroad. It was it had to do with um, I think the railroads, when you were dealing with Amtrak or something like that, there was this enormous amounts of uh, insurance costs um, that needed to be absorbed. So it actually made it affordable for small businesses. Uh, the stadium authorities uh, program, I haven't looked at yet. Um, I just received that document, that RFP. I just received that from them to review. Yeah, I just wanted to add the whole issue with the railroad insurance is a, is a whole separate ball game and it is very expensive. So, but I, I don't think that's something that's really what was the intent of closing the county. Well, I would say, Ms. Tucker, when you when you had a chance to look at those materials, let let us know or let let uh, Commissioner Chambers know, and we can get the we see if there's anything further to be said on it. But I understand there are some are some challenges, and it may be the sort of thing where we're not. Our final report, if if we want to mention it at all, simply say it deserves further study. But we're just 
we're not able to to land on any particular position uh, or recommendation. But it'd be helpful um, to, to know what you what you find out. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Okay. And then the next topic, uh, Commission business, is determination of additional presentations and information needed for the final report. We've sort of been talking through that here. I know uh, Commissioner Morheim has some uh, thoughts on that. He's also uh, he's in San Diego with his family the, this, uh, today. Um, so we will follow up there. But is there anything else beyond what we've talked about um, talked about so far? Uh, so far today, in terms of uh, the the meeting in uh, the next meeting in August the 26th, uh, we will be hearing from the um, from the uh, uh, efficiency review because their their final draft uh, recommendations will be ready by then. We'll also have our uh, the survey results from the uh, external and external stakeholder surveys. Uh, to discuss that may uh, help us figure out who else we might need to hear from. Um, I think the on call uh, contracting issue is uh, is one that um, an appropriate presentation would be uh, could be useful. Uh, and again, I know I know Dan Morham has ideas about uh, uh, the um, piggybacking cooperative purchasing piece too. But is there anything else that uh, jumps out at the moment? And obviously, commission is a we are we are a fluid, nimble group. So something may come up uh, in the next meeting or the meeting after that. But I, just in terms of planning purposes, if uh, we need to start tracking people down, um, uh, it all, all that takes a lot of time. And I uh, and Pete and her group did a fabulous job with the best practices panel. I just want to be sure we have heard from and gotten the information we, that we need as we start to work on the final report. Um, and that, so is there, before I leave that topic, is there anything else that jumps out to anyone as we're gathered here? Um, this doesn't it? jump out, but the subcommittee yeah. on um, sustainability that um, Dan chairs yeah. and Carla recruited me on, um, I know that we had a email chat going on between Carla and uh, Dan and I. So I know that there, and then we met with um, the new um, young lady who's heading up, um, what's the department? Sustainability, whatever. Jen, Jen Bustia? Yes, who, who spoke, spoke to our group, yes. Yeah. Right, yes. and then she spoke to our subgroup. So I know we have some additional recommendations that we'll be making, so my, um, and maybe and we'll just send an email to Dan and maybe like present those uh, additional thoughts at the next meeting for the recommendation. Okay. Commissioner right. um, Dixon, she's the she's um, Jennifer's the chief sustainability officer. Right, right, and yeah, and we met the subcommittee met with her as well. So, and after that meeting, we had and she gave us some additional information, and I know we. Had some emails going back and forth, our subcommittee about some recommendations. Great, good. Um, and I just uh, just got a note um, from uh, Ms. Butler about an upcoming conference um, about supply chain strategies, and it uh, apparently we'll have a, a segment on um, cooperative uh, procurement purchasing. So we'll we will share that. Uh, thank you, Ms. Butler. I'll share that after the meeting. Anybody's interested in signing up for that? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, on uh, the subject of on call contracting, which yes. is uh, specified in the executive order that set up the commission, yes. uh, I wonder uh, how we could become more informed or have somebody talk to us about it or, or how to then start to put it into something that will go into the final report. I don't have the answer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. That's at the top of my list. One of the things I want to talk to Elizabeth about um, next week is I'd like to get, I'd like to find out what the information, who, who the information sources are. I'm hoping when we get to the, we have our public input meeting on September 9, I'm hoping we'll hear from some stakeholders who've 
um, are involved with on-call uh, contracting. But um, you're right, that's top of the list. The other thing is fleet management, which I understand the um, uh, that the efficiency review um, group is looking at, and we should know more about that and where that stands August 26th, because I don't want us to duplicate effort. On the other hand, I want to be sure that it, whatever they um, whatever they have available to present to us uh, is um, uh, will fit and is uh, broad enough, or maybe that's the wrong word, wide ranging enough to to um, work for what we need to do and how we need to address that to comply with the executive order. But on call contracting, I'm 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 with you on that. So uh, let me put that on my list of things. Talk to Elizabeth about. We'll we'll get some uh, we'll get some information uh, on that presentation, uh, which could be very helpful. Um, if anybody has anything else, you can email me. You know, just add uh, Elizabeth and Jasmine uh, on on the email, um, and we'll uh, happy to take that up. And then the last item on commission business that uh, is on the agenda um, is planning for the September 9 uh, public input meeting. Um, and uh, as I said, Elizabeth is not uh, is away this week. And Jasmine, I don't know if you have anything to share on that in terms of the um, in terms of lo logistics. I know, um, well, why don't you let us know that? Obviously, it's going to be virtual. Uh, I think we're going to allow uh, up to two minutes in time for everybody uh, on comments. We'll see what kind of uh, sign up we have for that. Um, and um, it is, um, I think the idea is to get the comments and make notes, but um, not to uh, engage in. Uh, discussion with the particular speakers. Um, but Jasmine, do you have any other uh, information about the uh, advertising for that, if you will, the uh, anything else on the logistics? Um, so I'm working on my end to, um, I mean, it'll be a WebEx event, but to talk through the actual structure of it. Yes. Um, in terms of advertising too, I have a meeting set up for Monday to talk through it. So that way we can figure out how we would like to advertise it. Um, I'm also going to, Carla, you don't know this Tucker. I'm going to bug you to talk about your list for the last meeting, just to make sure that we um, cast a wide enough net. Okay. And um, we'll, um, uh, on the August 26th uh, agenda uh, is a, sort of finalizing all that, but to the extent um, based on other such um, virtual input meetings that other that others have uh, participated in, in other contexts, any suggestions, ideas, or the like, uh, please, uh, please share them. Uh, but um, it'll be September 9 before you know it. If anybody has any other thoughts on that? Yes, Peter. I'd just like to uh, talk about the uh, WebEx logistics. Um, today, I was not able to access the meeting using the panelists uh, link. Uh, Jasmine then sent me the public link, which was how I eventually was able to access the meeting. And especially after the difficulties with the um, presentation on the 28th, um, is that something we need to right directions for or uh, get additional assistance for or or what yeah uh, I'm, I'm open uh, to writing out some detailed um instructions for those that we invite to speak for the general public it should be pretty simple because they'll click the same it's a attendee link that um, is posted for all of our commission meetings um, but I'm happy to maybe draft a set of instructions and vet it with the commission if you see if it's comprehensive enough. So they would be they would be accessing it through a public link. The general public that's viewing, yes. For the panelists, it'd be sim or for those that we're having speak, it'd be similar to how each of you join every week. 
well, since I wasn't able to use the panelists link, is it just my system that um, it, it's the issue of passwords and not having a password and then getting in this circular uh, tunnel of uh, trying to get a password. You can't get a password. Um, so am I the only one that was prompted to put in a password that didn't have a password? I had a similar problem. Well, I had a problem as well. This is Carla Tucker. I'm getting on myself today. Um, and I just came out of another WebEx meeting. So I don't know what, why that prompted it other than the fact that the other meeting didn't require a password, but I had a password and it was requiring me to, it wanted me to add, um. WebEx to my Chrome browser, which should auto, should be automatic here, but it wasn't. <laughs> I'd like to make a recommendation that you all, um, um, Jasmine, talk with uh, Scott about what's happening because, you know, there are some quirky things that have been happening with the WebEx platform after this last upgrade. So I think that it's important that OIT knows what you're experiencing. They always ask us to report, you know, technical difficulties and since, um, his division is responsible for hosting platforms like this for us anytime we have a, a public meeting. I think that he could help. Um, Jasmine, you know Scott Strickland. Yep, that's who I'm coordinating with for the public meeting. So I will um, let him know about the issues and see how we can remedy that. Jasmine. Yeah, I had to cut and paste. Mm. I, I, had I had challenges on. I had to cut and paste. I had to call my IT guy to say, look, all right, I need to get on. And we finally got on, but a couple of times I, I've had challenges on and off. One time I think I didn't. This well, is for, for me today, I'm, um, you, when you're typing in it, sometimes it's asking me for my first and last name and other times it's there. Today it asked me for my first and last name. And because I have my information in the system, it was automatically populating. So what happened, it pop, we populated my password and then WebEx says that doesn't match. Well, it's because it's case sensitive and in WebEx, it was all lowercase already in there versus I tend to use upper and lower cases when I'm typing it. So I went out, went back in and just saw that it was already and just didn't touch it. And, just, you know, so sometimes what we think we're, you know, adding the right information webex is saying no we don't want it that way it's it tends to be restrictive and not knowing that your own email would be case sensitive passwords yeah but email didn't think so so that goes back to the instructions um even for those of us who think we know what we're doing <laughs> i think instructions be very helpful um one of the things i would also uh suggest for September um, 9 is that maybe we set up an earlier time, you know, 10 or 15 minutes earlier, just to get ourselves logged on in case anyone's having any problems. Um, just so when we go live, um, the uh, as many commission members who are able to attend will be uh, have their video and audio set and um, uh, rather than everybody trying to jump on a minute or two beforehand. So that's um, okay. Well, um, we'll um, ask the IT wizards to uh, to give us a hand here, and we've got uh, we've got some time to get get ready. But um, obviously, that's uh, that's uh, the logistics are are important. Um, that is all that I have. Is there anything else? Uh, yes, Ms. Docker. Um, when you, I don't know if it's the same on your side when you log out, but there's a survey when you log out to say how it what how the session was. Maybe if you put the feedback in there as well as talk as us talking to IT, that might help too. Because I don't, maybe that goes straight to WebEx. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm sure it does just go to some box somewhere that nobody opens, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a better. I'm gonna have a better thought for humanity than that uh, as we end the meeting. Is there anything else for the good of the order that uh, anybody has uh, they'd like to bring up? Uh, Commissioner Walsh, yes, please. Mr. Chairman, really quickly, I uh, just want to make sure the final report will be a final standalone document incorporating all the content 
of the interim report and the additional work we've been doing since that time, correct? Um, that is my understanding, yes. Um, and, the, and, uh, yeah. and if necessary, we could clarify language, improve yes. things in the interim yes. report if we, if we feel fit? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it was an interim report and again, I, um, uh, everybody worked really hard and there are, um, obviously there are a number of recommendations in there and I uh, believe that uh, the great, great, great majority of them will uh, stand the test of time between the interim report and the final report, but to the extent things need to be adjusted or changed, supplemented, amended, uh, whatever verb you want to use, absolutely. Uh, and the final report is the final report. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Of course. Yes, Peter. On that subject, uh, and good point, Steve, uh, would it, uh, how would it be to include the interim report as like a, an appendix and in the document of the final report, highlight the things that either you, that you don't want to, that you want to change or uh, want to develop further than were addressed in the interim report. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure how, how it would be to be integrating the two. I, I think Madam CAO may have the answer to that question, but I, I, I thought that the, uh, the, the, there would be something like that, that the interim report would, would or could be an appendix, but um, okay. someone else who's, who's been involved with, with this in the county, because I have not before, might have some information on that. And Madam CEO, you had your hand up. I'm sorry, I didn't call on you. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I can address that in our in our follow waste work group um, report. We had an interim report, but we we did that because we had a, a date specific time that we needed to get certain things in the budget. So we worked on uh, recommendations that um, were for things we're going to. Uh, considered for the FY22 budget. But when we did our final report and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully in the next week, we'll be able to release it. We incorporated all recommendations into one document. We did not okay. do um, a standalone because we felt like the report encompassed all that we had worked on and what we, you know, made final recommendations on. So the, both the interim recommendations um, uh, were incorporated into the final recommendations. That's how that's how we chose to handle it because of why we needed to do our interim report in March. Um, my my um, question, why we can, I wanted to also um, articulate that we have other recommendations that we're still reviewing and vetting with Mr. C.E. So the final disposition on all of the recommendations from the disparity study have not been released yet. The ones that are in the PowerPoint presentation and, and those that we were able uh, to speak publicly about for the for the, um, the the event on the 28th are listed in the um, PowerPoint that, that Carla um, has provided. But we do have a number of recommendations that um, we're working through with Mr. CE um, because there's some regulatory considerations that were in the, the uh, study that we uh, want Mr. CE to consider. Um, he is make, finalizing his decision on the increase of goals. Um, he's committed to doing that, but we haven't landed quite yet. Um, we anticipate being able to talk about the remainder of the recommendations with Mr. CE by mid-September, because he's asked us, there's a couple of things we're doing. We, we, we have some follow-up work, you know, that infrastructural development work that we um, hope to be able to do with uh, Dr. Ramsey. This is like the manuals and things like that, that we really need that technical expertise. But what we will do, because we want to um, try to ensure that from timing wise that we align with you all so you know the full uh, extent of what um, where the county is on the recommendations that came out of the study. So I anticipate being able to vet them, the final ones with the CE and get a decision before the end of September. 
Okay. Well, I, I think I think for purposes of uh, Commissioner Walsh, Commissioner Walsh's question, we will we will have a final. Um, obviously, there will be the final report. All of the recommendations that are the commission's final recommendations, uh, and a lot of those will come from the interim report. Will be in that single document. Um, in the event, I don't think I don't think this will occur. But let's say there was a recommendation made in the interim report. And we decided, um, based on things we learned in the last six months of the commission's work, that uh, we had to make the complete opposite recommendation or um, delete the recommendation in some way. If we felt that was noteworthy, we can do that in a footnote or in some other way. Um, but um, what we produce on November 30 uh, will be all of our recommendations. Um, we will vet the obviously vet carefully um, the interim report recommendations to, to be sure they still stand, and of course we'll vet carefully our new rec our additional new recommendations based on this last six months' work and produce a single document. Um, that sounds like um, sounds like that's consistent with what else has been done, and we'll look forward to um, having in September uh, MCAO those. Uh, uh, the CE's recommendations and see where we land with all that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order before we before we sign off? Seeing none, uh, hearing none. Uh, thank you all very much for attending. Always a pleasure. And I will see everybody on the 26th. Take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.